to Art Break Live. I'm Susie Wolf, and I work in the Education Department at the Baltimore Museum of Art. Our Wurzberger and Levy Sculpture Gardens are open, so today we are going to talk about movement, and that is the way in which sculptors make works of art appear to be moving even when they aren't. And we'll also look at one work of art that actually moves, but so slowly that it's difficult to tell. And when we get to the live portion of our program, I'll show you a way to make a work of art uh, based on one of the outdoor sculptures that we look at. So finally, go ahead and type your questions and comments below. And when we get to the live portion of our program, I'll take a look at them. So let's take a look at the horse. And it was made by Raymond Duchamp Villon in 1966. So what I'd love to do first is to look at it from all sides as if we were in the sculpture garden and to see what reminds you of a horse. So take a look. Well, to me, from this one side, it looks like a galloping horse. And this is a movie from 1878 um, by an artist named Edward Newbridge that shows a horse racing. And we can look at it and see things that are very similar in our sculpture. Do you see that that back leg looks as if it's on a diagonal, as if it's pushing off, and the front leg is on a diagonal like this. So it makes it look as if it's galloping and take a look at the size of that muscle in the front leg. It really makes it look like this horse is galloping hard. And let's talk about those lines. Diagonals uh, make us think of movement. When we think of horizontal lines, we often think of somebody who's asleep in a bed and not moving, and vertical lines as somebody who is standing up and not moving. But when we see diagonal lines, they tend to make us think that something is moving. From the other side, you may think that it looks like the horse is maybe jumping, getting ready to jump over something. It has its hind legs pushing off and its front legs curled like this. And from one more angle, we see what looks like a hoof on the ground. So this actually, as it is abstract, picks up a lot of movement from horses, doesn't it, with these diagonal lines. And that is because the artist was an equestrian himself, a very accomplished uh, rider, and would have seen horses in these movements throughout his life. And now on to our last work of art called Construction 140 by Jose Ruiz de Rivera, and it was made in 1974. And the artist loved to explore taking up the most amount of space with the smallest amount of metal. So let's see how he does that. If we stand in just one place, stand in front of it and watch it move, we'll see that every four minutes, it completely makes a turn. And that's done by a motor that's hidden in the pedestal of the work of art. Now, Earlier, we talked about the ways that diagonal lines give a sense of movement, but curved lines like those in Construction 140 do as well. Just think about dancers with their arms curled above their heads or with people twirling ribbons that curl through the air. To make this sculpture, de Rivera polished and polished and polished stainless steel so that it reflects both the sky and the landscape around it. And it's not just flat pieces of metal. It actually has three parts to make it even stronger. So this work of art has been called a ray of light curving through space. And in a second, when I come to you live, I'm going to show you a way to make a work of art so that you can explore shapes that move. So hold on for a second and I'll be back with you live. Hey everyone, thank you for joining me today. I hope you liked um, our little uh, look around of the sculpture garden. 
Uh, someone asked if the Sculpture Garden has reopened, and in fact it has. Um, you are welcome to come anytime that you want to um, to see it uh, when the when the Sculpture Gardens are open, and that is from Tuesday to Sunday, um, from ten until five. So you you need to bring your mask um, and practice social distancing. But we'd love to see you, and it's so exciting to be um, to be back in the museum. There's a special thing actually going on in uh, the Sculpture Gardens through September 30th. So if you can come between now and September 30th, and that is Gertrude's Restaurant has a food cart in the Sculpture Gardens and they are serving um, um, snow cones as well as five different kinds of gourmet hot dogs. And I had one in there, fabulous. So please come. The other great news is that yesterday um, we reopened um, some of the galleries in the museum to the public. So we'd love to see you back at the museum. And to do that, um, just go to our website, um, artbma.org, and you can reserve um, free passes uh, to see the galleries. I think that's the that's all the information I have for you on the sculpture gardens right now and the um, and the museum itself. But it's so exciting to uh, to have everything open again. Okay, so we looked at construction 140, um, and uh, I wanted to show you a way that you and children can um, make a work of art together that is inspired by construction 140. And that is that if you take a piece of paper like this and, ooh, I'm getting glare, and um, draw a spiral on it. So um, this is heavy construction paper. You could use regular construction paper, whatever paper you have. Draw a spiral on it and then cut out the spiral. And if you do, you can hang it like this and it moves very much like construction 140. Um, and you can put a hole in it, tie it with some string, maybe hang it on your ceiling with some tape. We're, we're a family that <laughs> puts tape on ceilings. But also, um, there is a great way to do it as well, and that is by putting um, two um, hangers together. You can make a stand for it that will hang as well. And for more information on how to do that, if you go to our website, and check out our activities for families. It'll walk you through this whole process. So let me see if there are any questions. Sarah, I know you're excited to visit in per person. It is gorgeous. And especially um, the gardens, if you haven't visited, are um, have gorgeous trees in them and well as seasonal plantings that um, are meant to um, just give a lovely sort of backdrop for the sculptures. So with the leaves changing, it's a perfect time to come. All right, we'll wait one more minute to see if there's anything else that, um, that anyone has to say. Um, I will say that Art Break Live now is going to be coming to you once a month. It's on the third Thursday of the month at two o'clock. And we are going to be showing some of our um, uh, most loved Art Break Lives. And the first one that we're going to show on Thursday, um, October 15th at 2 o'clock is on the Antioch Mosaics. No, um, Sarah, not all the sculptures in the Sculpture Garden are made of metal. Um, we have some that are marble, some that are granite. Um, and I think that's it. Um, I have a colleague, Veronica, if, she, if you think of other materials that are out there, please, um, please write them. Why was the, scu the sculptor of Construction 140 so interested in making things move? Um, that's an interesting question. So uh, what he liked to do, I think, as I said in the video, was to take up the most amount of space with the least amount of material. Um, and so to give you a sense, it's a little hard to tell from the photograph, those pieces of metal are about as wide as I can get my uh, fingers. 
and they're three-sided to give it extra strength. Interestingly, they're initially constructed with a spine inside with triangles to support um, the metal. And then uh, before the metal uh, is welded together, the that spine is taken out. So you have a beautiful, um, not a pyramid shape. There's a name for that shape. <laughs> Anyway, um, so that's what gives it his strength. But he was interested in taking up the most amount of space with the least amount of room. Most amount of space with the least amount of material. So sorry. We'll give you one more second to look at construction uh, 140. Um, I was out there in the sculpture garden um, last week, just um, looking at it again, and you can hear the uh, motor. If you stand close to the, the base, which is black, uh, black stone base, um, you can hear the motor inside and it just curves so slowly you can barely see it. But if you make your own sculptures, um, they'll move it home. Oh, good question, Veronica. How does the BMA take care of the sculptures outside? That's a really good question. So some of our uh, yearly, um, the, uh, the works of art are cleaned by our conservation team um, and some conservation um, people focus on painting or textiles. We have some in our conservation department that just focus on sculpture. And so um, once a year, uh, in the case of our metal sculptures, um, they will be uh, gently cleaned and then often covered with a very light wax that does not affect the, um, the surface of the sculpture at all. Um, but just acts as a barrier to keep environmental um, issues from affecting or from pitting the metal. And here is the horse. I love the fact that from one side, from this side here, it looks like it's galloping. And then from that other side, it absolutely looks like, at least to me, it absolutely looks like um, a there that it is the horse that is jumping over something and his head is down. Isn't that interesting how um, an artist can take abstract, uh, put an abstract sculpture together? Um, and just so you understand that term, when an artist makes something abstract, he or she is not interested in um, copying the real world. So often if something's abstract, they are trying to get a feeling of something. Um, and th in this case, you get the power of the horse and its ability to run and its ability to jump as well. So thank you very much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you on October 15th. Now the third um, Thursdays of the month at two o'clock and I'll see you back so we can talk about Antioch Mosaics. Thank you.